What could I possibly say about Gojira that hasn't been said a million times already? The film is the granddaddy of all kaiju movies. It created a genre and influenced the course of Japanese cinema in ways that are still felt today. It was one of those lightning in a bottle type movies where various creative forces come together to create a work of art that changes everything. <laughs> Gojira is about the end of the world. If the end of the world came in the form of a giant radioactive dinosaur. It of course sounds silly on paper, but like all good ideas, it's the execution that matters. And here, it is executed almost flawlessly. And the result is a timeless classic that spoke to an entire generation, allowing them to consider and cope with a national tragedy that still stung and lingered in their minds. Now, none of this would have been possible without the talents of the cast and crew both on and off the screen. Drawing from his own experiences during the war, director Ashiro Honda brings an earthy, documentarian style to the film, making it feel believable and thus all the more haunting, especially in no small part to special effects maestro Ijai Tsuburaya, whom working within his limitations managed to craft sequences of destruction that, while dated, are still impressive to this day. The human characters aren't the most complex, but their simplicity gives the story an elegance that grounds the extraordinary events within the mundane. Akira Takarada, Momomokochi, Akehiko Hirata, and Takahashi Shimura all bring their characters to life in subdued and relatable ways that make it easy to sympathize with them. <laughs> But the star of the show is Godzilla, of course, here at his most abjectly evil, a fire-breathing dragon of mass destruction who rises from the ocean depths with apocalyptic intentions. This film introduced everything that would go on to define the monster. His iconic look, a mutant crossbreed between a T-Rex and a Stegosaurus. His atomic breath, able to set ablaze anything it touches. His invulnerability, the unlimited potential of atomic power made flesh. And of course, who could forget his trademark earth-shattering roar, created by the always incredible Akira Ifukubi, whose musical compositions elevate the film to the stratosphere, giving Godzilla an instantly memorable theme that you'll catch yourself humming every once in a while. With so many films in this franchise, most of them colorful, fun, and schlocky, it can be shocking for the uninitiated to discover just how dour and melancholic the original film is. Not content with being another by-the-numbers monster flick, Gojira is a mood piece that uses the blockbuster format to explore then-modern-day concerns over mankind's pursuit for the next big superweapon and the dangers of atomic power. As his name suggests, Godzilla is a living deity a being who seeks to punish us for the sins of his creation. Man, woman, or child, it doesn't matter. All are guilty. <laughs> And so the film doesn't end with the beast dead, the city saved, and the hero victorious. While Godzilla does die, his death casts a dark shadow over the future of humanity. What hope do we have when good men unwittingly create super weapons? How can we survive when we have the power to create monsters? Gojira isn't your average Godzilla movie. It isn't even your average monster movie. It is something more. A legitimate work of art with a message and a heart that happens to feature one of cinema's greatest fictional characters. In over 60 years, it still doesn't get much better than this. For more reviews and opinions on all things Godzilla, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.